Welcome to the 8 past 10 brief. Nick and I, we just returned from Geneva where we had a short meeting. And of course, when you sit in the car going back and forthing, you talk about the weather forecast. See, the weather forecast here from our office is snow, snow, snow. But what's the weather forecast when it comes to horology? In terms of that, I'd like to talk about the report that our great colleagues Chrono24 came out with early January this year. It actually shows the weather forecast for the watches in terms of the interest of what watches are popular. See, when you look at the different continents, the three continents, the Americas, Europe and Asia, it's the same 10 brands being up top 10. They differ in position, you know, Rolex is always on top, Omega, uh, Audemars Piquet, Patek, etc., etc. See, that's 10 brands taking most of the interest of all the watch interested people in the world. They're taking up so much space that actually 582 other watch brands only take 37% of the overall interest. So you might want to think, well, that's because the top 10, they offer the best watches in the world. Absolutely, we can probably not disagree that Rolex, they make fantastic watches. So does Audemars Piquet, Patek Philippe, Panerai, Breitling, Omega, IWC, everybody else on the top 10 list. But there's another 582 watch brands out there, ladies and gentlemen, and they're all probably great watches too. So what makes these watches so popular if it's not only the quality, or is it the quality that makes them so popular? It's also the massive amount of money being spent on marketing because you cannot sell a watch without a great history. You might want to add that um, maybe it's because that uh, Rolex spends a lot of, of, of money on the marketing. Um, maybe it's because the Panerai does the same. But is the quality better? We don't know. But what we need to add is the emotional values. See, the emotional values are currency that is actually accepted anywhere in the world. You cannot explain what emotional values is. But if you enter, for instance, the Patek Philippe Salon in Geneva, which Nick and I we did while we were passing through, you want to buy everything. And if you ask me when I come out there without actually having bought anything because First of all, you can't buy anything, you can only order it. Secondly, I could not order what I wanted because I had not been in contact with Patek Philippe for three generations. Also, I do not own a hundred Patek Philippe watches. We still left the boutique with a great feeling of, wow, Patek. That's amazing. Patek Philippe gives you that emotion of wowness. And also, Patek Philippe is probably the only watch brand in the world that actually can take a Russian oligarch who just parks his Bugatti van on just outside on Rue de Rennes in Geneva, and he's casually entering, wanting to buy a 10 million euro Patek Philippe Grand Complication. He will be met with the very nice and very well-trained and gentle staff going, thank you so much, sir, for showing your interest in our watch brand. Uh, we have to ask before uh, uh, we make the order of the very super complicated Patek, do you own a Patek, sir? If the answer is no, the fine staff of Patek Philippe will actually show a tray of Calatrava entry-level models from Patek Philippe. See, the young gentleman from uh, a Russian oligarch family or whatever trillion of money he has inherited, he will have to leave without that watch that he wanted because he does not have any relations, any prior relations with Patek Philippe. That's amazing to have a brand that offers the ability to say no thank you to your money. That's a privilege. And that's another great reason to love Patek. Do Patek like, make better, better watches than everybody else? I don't know. I have no idea. But I love the brand. I'm seduced. I am seduced because of the emotional values that comes with a brand like Patek Philippe. Enough about my love for watches, enough about my love for especially Patek Philippe and many other brands. That's the weather forecast with the 10 brands, the top 10 brands, the same top 10 brands 
no matter where you are in the world in terms of click, in terms of interest, in terms of what Chrome 24 has uh, accounted for over the last year. But what about the 582 other watch brands? Please join us in a discussion either here on, uh, on YouTube or on our app, 8 past 10. Subscribe here if you didn't do that already. Download our app if you haven't. There's no article actually connected to this. It's basically just a very nice discussion that Nick and I, we had back and forthing while visiting Switzerland, the land of chocolate and great watches. Which watch brand would you like to see on the top 10? And why do you think it deserves to be there? Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week.